Good morning everybody, this is Stephen Laurie from CNAG and I'm just doing a quick screencast to show you how to get started with the RD Connect Genomics platform. So the first thing you need to do is go to this web page in your browser, platform.rdconnect.eu then look down to the genomics section and you'll see the link for explore data. Click on that link and then to log in you have to use your supplied username and password and that will take you to the platform itself. So basically we have the screen divided into three sections. At the top left we have where you select your samples and the various filtration measures. At the bottom you'll see your results and at the top right here we have more detailed results. Each section has some tooltips so you see if you hover here it's sample selection in this panel you have to select the sample IDs and set the filter criteria. So let's add a sample. You see it's automatically selected as affected the first one. And by default it's looking for heterozygous positions but you could be looking for homozygous ref or homozygous alternative. We have a min read depth at this position, a minimum genotype quality and filters based on allele depth. So this means the proportion of allele supporting the alternative call were between 0.2 and 0.8. This makes sense for a heterozygous position but you can change these to be more lenient if you want by making them wider or to be more restrictive by making them tighter. Likewise for genotype quality you might want to restrict only to very high quality variants above GQ of 90 or you might want to be more lenient and include variants that were only read to a depth of 10. What type of variant are we looking for? Well usually we're looking for variants in ensemble coding genes, protein coding genes and usually we're interested in things predicted to have a high or moderate impact so basically this is any non-synonymous mutation or anything more severe than that splice sites, stop mutations, indels etc. The population section we're obviously interested in rare alleles so let's say we only want things that have a frequency of less than 0.05 in EXAC or in the thousand genomes project And we might be interested in it being predicted to be uh, disease causing by one of the tools that try to predict these things. So this at the moment is implemented as an OR. So if we select disease or damaging, uh, if the variant is classified as damaging or disease by any one of these uh, predictive tools, then we'll get some results. So Let's run a query here. So you can see what our query was. We're looking for coding, high moderate impact, uh, filtered by Thousand Genomes Project and Exact, and effect prediction uh, A for mutation taster for non annotated variant, uh, disease causing variants, and D for predictive disease causing or damaging. And here you see we have 626 results and we show up to 100 results per screen. So if you scroll down you can see the first 100 results are here and other we can load the other screen so this will be results between position 301 and, and 400. And if we pick a variant, so let's have a look at this uh, TNXB. So we click on this position. It automatically loads the same position into the top right hand corner here. So we can see chromosome 6, position 332,052,444 on uh, the reference is a C, the alt is a T. We can see the genotype for our individual uh, under samples here. So the genotype was heterozygote. The genotype quality at this position in this individual was 99, the depth 43 reads, and uh, we c this should be AD, uh, the allele depth, uh, the f frequency of reads, the proportion of reads supporting the alternative here was 0.48. So almost exactly half the reads supporting alternative, half the reads supporting reference. So this is a good heterozygote position. 
If we click on the functional tab, we'll see here that there's two different transcripts in this team, TNXB, that are hit by this variant. It's moderate because it's a simple amino acid change uh, from an arginine to a histidine. The tools, well, the CAD score is 16, SIFT says it's tolerated, but Polyfen says it's uh, damaging, Mutation Taster says it's neutral. We can see that the frequency in uh, exec is 1 in 60 about, uh, and this was the same in the ESP, uh, European Americans, less so in African Americans. It's not observed in the Thousand Genomes Project, uh, Africans or Asians, and it has a similar frequency to exec in the European. So still quite a rare variant. We click on uh, another one. So we click on this one, and you see now automatically loaded up here. We have the RGL position coding, moderate, miss sense again, glutamine, glycine to glutamine. You see, we've also included links out to the most important genome databases. So MTCH1, if we click on OMOM here, it will link directly to the OMOM entries for MTCH1. Likewise for Ensemble, Entree, Gene Card, Cosmic, Clinbar, Exac, and US Central. So let's add some more samples. So this is actually the index case of a, of a trio. This is one of the parents, E36. E37 is another parent. Now this is a suspected de novo. So in the parents, we're looking for homozygous reference positions. In the index, we're looking for a heterozygote position. We're still interested in things that are moderate or high and quite rare. Uh, we would expect if it's uh, going to be important that it's predicted by damaging by one of the tools. So let's run this query and let's see how many variants we get. Here you see we're down to just five variants that fulfill these criteria. And here they are. So we can see the genotype here. Is always heterozygote for the index. We can see the genotype of the parents is almost homozygous, re always homozygous reference. And we can see the genes that are involved here. All these are only moderate impact variants, but one of them is predicted to be disease causing by all three uh, predictor tools. And we click on that one and we load that up here. We see it's in the gene RIR1. It's hitting four transcripts. It's a simple miss miss sense here. Yeah. If we look at the population, we can see that this has not been observed in any of these population data sets. The predictive information again, as for below, everything suggests it's disease causing. We look at the samples and we see the genotype quality is very high and the depth is reasonable in the parents and actually this has a surprisingly high depth in the sample. But the allele, uh, allele depth uh, proportion is very good again, despite the depth being so high, almost exactly half the reads uh, support the reference and half the reads support the, the variant, uh, the, the alternative position. And this, in this case, this is the variant that has been identified by the clinical researchers involved to be of interest. Now, if we want to reset our settings, we go up here and click Reset. And that resets everything to defaults. Uh, so you'll see the population filters have disappeared. The variant types have disappeared. So everything's blank. But it leaves the, the samples the same. Uh, so that this is, a, this is an easy way of doing a, a different type of uh, filtration on the same samples. If you want to remove a sample, you would click here the sample goes away. So we'll add it back in. So now I want to show you an example of using 
the compound tetrazygote filter. So you'll see here we have the same three samples. And as it's compound tetrazygosity, the only thing that's important is knowing which one is the affected. And at the moment, we're assuming that all non-affected are parents. So we click this box for compound tetrazygote. And again, we can apply filters. So let's assume we need a pair of variants that are at least of moderate impact that are segregating in a compound heterozygote manner within this trio. We hit run query. And you see initially we have 521 results here at the bottom. And the way the query is implemented is that we're looking for at least two variants in the same transcript of a particular gene. So here we can see the first example in TMEM82 we have one high impact variant and one moderate impact variant that are segregating in a compound heterozygote manner. So the index is heterozygote in both positions and the parents are heterozygote at one but homozygote reference at the other. We can also add population frequencies here but these would apply to both variants so now we're looking for compound heterozygosity two variants same transcript and both rare so for example now we have three variants here in MBF, MBPF10 we can see in the third one the First parent is homozygote, I don't know which one's mother and which one's father. And in the first and second case, the other parent is homozygote, so the third one could pair with any of the other two to make a compound heterozygote pairing that may be of interest for us. So the final thing I want to show you is that we've implemented the compound heterozygosity filter so that it can act upon a single individual. So if you just have an index case we can get a list of putative compound edges zygote positions that might be of interest. So let's look for all transcripts that have at least two high or moderate variants that are relatively rare that are heterozygous in this individual So you'll see we have 461 and at the top of this list we actually have one that's predicted to be high, this Prime Family 2 variant. But at the moment we are not, you'll see it's greyed out, the allele depth filter here and when we go to the sample we see that this one actually has a very low allele depth. Probably just, uh, so there's just 9% of reads are supporting the alternative allele and in our experience this would suggest that this is a false positive. So at some point in the future we will implement a filter uh, so that we can also remove these because they're below the minimal allele depth of, of 0 0.2. But the fact that this is greyed out means that it's not actually being used. However the DP of 20 and the genotype quality of, of 50 are being used. So this will give a very long list of, of possible variants, but perhaps you have your, your, your favorite uh, gene. So maybe you're interested in MBFP1. If you put MBFP1 here into your gene name filter, I'll take another one that I can see, uh, RGPD3. So this takes a comma separated list of genes. And we run the query again, and now we just get the three because it's MDPF1. We get just the eight variants in these two genes. So that's the end of my screencast for today. 
I hope you found it helpful. All the best.